Okay, this video is going to be about another test for convergence called the P-series test for convergence. And this one's very easy to use if you happen to have a series in the right form. So it looks like this. If you have a series that you can manipulate into the form of 1 over n raised to the p power, then you can quickly show whether this series converges or not by just looking at the value of p. So the way it works is if p is greater than 1, you'll know that the series converges. If p is less than or equal to 1, then the series diverges. So it's really fairly straightforward. Now we'll work some sample problems out here, but I think it helps to graphically get a feel for what this thing looks like. So let's look at a couple of examples before we move to some specific algebraic ones. First of all, let's take a graph up here and let's look at three cases. And the cases look like this. Now, um, we'll look at a case where uh, p is less than 1, where p is equal to 1, and where p is greater than 1. Let's start with this one, 1 over n. Now you might recognize this as the harmonic series, and what I want to know is, given the series, if this were a sequence that makes it made up a series, uh, does the series converge or diverge? Now 1 over n is like having 1 over n to the first power, so in this case p would be equal to 1, so what I'd have here in this case, p is equal to 1, and to determine whether the series converges or diverges, just look at the rule. So you've got 1 over p is equal to 1, so if p is equal to 1, you've got this case right here, this series is going to diverge. So the series uh, 1 over n, the harmonic series, diverges because p is equal to 1. Now graphically, let's take a look at this. It'll help uh, you visualize how this rule works. If we were to take the, the terms that make up this sequence and plot them, they would look like this. It would be the series of red dots right over here. Now, for a series to converge, the only way a series can converge is if the terms of the sequence that make up that series approach zero. So the sequence has to be approaching zero. In other words, the terms have to be getting smaller and smaller and approaching zero over here. And in this case, uh, clearly the terms are approaching zero. Uh, so uh, it, it, the sequence, so the series has a possibility of converging. But there's actually a second part about this, and it says this. Not only do the terms have to be approaching zero, but they have to be approaching zero at a fast enough rate. Now what this one is, this one is 1 over n, and as it turns out, even though these dots are approaching the x-axis, they're not approaching the x-axis at a fast enough rate, and therefore the series is going to diverge. Now let's compare that to this next series. Suppose we had, and we'll go to this one, 1 over n squared. Now in this case, p is equal to 2, so you'll have p is equal to 2 here. And the question is, does this series converge or not? We're using the p-series test for convergence, just look up here. In this case, you've got 2. 2 is greater than 1, so this series is going to converge. So we'll put converge on this one. Now, graphically, let's take a look and see what this one would look like. So, if we plotted the dots for 1 over n squared, it would be this series of blue dots right here. And it's similar to the series for 1 over n, so we'll put a little arrow here. This is going to be 1 over n squared. So, both the red dots and the blue dots are approaching the x-axis. Both of them are approaching 0. But remember, the second part is this. Not only do they have to approach 0, they have to approach 0 at a fast enough rate. Now, if you look at it, each blue dot is getting to zero quicker than each red dot is. And in this case, it will turn out that not only are the blue dots approaching zero, but they're approaching zero at a fast enough rate that the series will converge. So, uh, let's take a look at the last possibility. And the last possibility looks like this. <clears throat> so, another example. In this case, we have 1 over n to the 1 half power. So, in this case, p is equal to 1 half, which is less than 1. So again, this green series is going to diverge. Now, let's plot those points and see what they look like. So if you plotted the green dots, they would look something like this. This is the series, or the sequence, 1 over the square root of n, or 1 over n to the 1 half power. Now the thing to notice on this is to just kind of keep in mind, just visually as you look at these, anytime you're working with a p-series, it's in this form right here. Uh, and you can kind of use 1 over n as a cutoff point on it. Um, 
The series of blue dots are approaching zero at a fast enough rate that the series converges. But the red dots, even though they're approaching zero, they're not approaching zero at a fast enough rate, so it diverges. And then you can think that the green dots are approaching the x-axis even slower than the red dots are. So if the red dots are going to diverge, then the green dots, and actually for that matter, any dots higher than this will also diverge, which is what this thing says. Uh, so just keep in mind as, as you run through this thing is it's not sufficient for the dots to be approaching the x-axis. They have to be approaching the x-axis at a rate uh, that's great enough to ensure that the, the uh, series will converge. And anytime you have a p that's greater than 1, it assures you that this, if it's in this form, that the dots will be approaching the x-axis at a fast enough rate. So anyway, that's just a quick view of what it is. Now let's look at some problems. The problems themselves are actually pretty easy. <clears throat> okay, and in the first one, what you've got is this. You want to show that the series 5 over uh, n cubed, does it converge or diverge? And the idea is you have to manipulate it into this form. So you want to change it in the form of the summation of 1 over n to the p, where it looks like this, then you can apply the uh, p-series test. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll make this one be equal to, now first of all, I'll take the constant 5 and bring it to the outside. So I'll have 5 times the summation of from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. But now in this case, you're actually done. It's the, the multiplying by a constant doesn't affect convergence. So if you just look at the power, in this case right here, p is equal to 3, and therefore, uh, going back to the rule, since p is greater than 1, this series is going to converge. So this implies that this series is going to converge. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of other examples. Um, so generally this thing is actually pretty easy to use. Uh, now the trick, I suppose, is just manipulating it where you can get in a form that looks like 1 over n to the p power. So in this one, let's start by doing the following. First of all, we've got the constant 4, so I'll bring that to the outside. So 4 times the summation of n equals 1 to infinity, and that's going to leave me with n to the negative 2 thirds power. Again, I'll change that into 4 times the summation, uh, that's a little better summation sign than that, of the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. <laughs> and since this is n raised to the negative two-thirds power, you can make move it to the bottom and make it be n to the positive two-thirds power. Okay, now, uh, this actually puts it in the form that you wanted here. You've got 1 over n raised to a certain power. So looking at this, uh, again, the power is to the two-thirds. So you've got p is equal to two-thirds. Now, two-thirds, go back to your rule, <coughs> is less than one, so this series is going to diverge. So that was, since p is less than one, this will diverge. <coughs> so this one is just a matter of manipulate it until you get it in the form 1 over n to the p power. Okay, let's take the next example. And what this one's going to be, again, it's just a matter of, it looks a little more complicated, but it's really just a matter of trying to turn it into 1 over n to the p power. So let's just play around with it and see what we can do. Now, first of all, the 3 fourths is a constant, so I can go ahead and bring that to the outside. So I'll make this be 3 fourths of the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. And I'll change what's left. This one, now just remember, the cube root of n squared is equal to n raised to the two-thirds power. It's like you take the, the root and bring it to the denominator, so this would be n to the two-thirds. So I'll change, I'll bring the constant out in front and change this into n to the two-thirds power. Then in the bottom you've still got n squared. Now again, you want to have a 1 in the top with n raised to some power in the bottom, so this will be 3 fourths of the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. 
And what I think I'll do next is this. First of all, here's the one, the n squared. And take this n to the two-thirds, move it to the bottom, make it be n to the negative two-thirds. So now you've got all the n's on the bottom. Well, that's going to be three-fourths of the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. And you can think of this as, you're going to add these together. This would be 2 plus a negative 2 thirds. Or you could make it be n, we'll do it this way, n to the 6 thirds minus n to the, or plus, or times n to the 2 thirds. This is negative. And now you would add the exponents. So 6 minus 4, this will turn out to be 1 over n to the 4 thirds power. So finally, you've got it in a form that you were looking for. So in this case, uh, the constant is going to be, I'm doing red again just to be consistent here, uh, p is going to be equal to 4 thirds. So you know that p is equal to 4 thirds. Again, the constant out in front doesn't affect conversions. So since p is equal to 4 thirds, now look back at your rule, and 4 thirds is greater than 1, so this series is going to converge. So which means that you're going to converge. So again, it's just a matter of manipulating it. Try to get it into form. Eventually, 1 over n raised to the p power, and it's just a matter of doing the algebra. And we'll look at one last example. And in this last example, suppose it's given in an expanded form. So you've got a series that looks like this, and you want to know First of all, does it converge and, or does it diverge? And also, can you happen to manipulate it into the form where you can apply the p-test, the p-series test? So we'll do this. We'll change it into, now first of all, 5. You've got a constant 5 in the top of all these, so I'm going to factor a 5 out. So this would be 5, and what's left over would be 1 plus 1 half plus, then you'd have 1 third plus 1 fourth and so on. And it would go on. Uh, forever. Now the next trick is to recognize this is going to be equal to 5 and recognize that all of this part right here, so from here to here, that's like 1 over, and again n is equal to 1, so 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, this all turns into 1 over n. So this would be like having 5 times, and we'll write this as the summation of 1 over n as n goes from 1 off to infinity. And again, what that, we'll just put it one last time. 5 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Now, at this point, uh, recognize 1 over n is like having 1 over n to the first power. So in this case, you've got, you've got it set up right. p is equal to 1. So look back at your rule. And if p is less than or equal to 1, in this case it's equal to 1, then the series diverges. So since p is equal to 1, that tells you that this series diverges. So really, for most of these type problems, we'll kind of look back at this one. It's just a matter of if you're given an original series, uh, manipulate it and try to get it in the form 1 over n to the p power. If you do, then you can apply this p series rule. And again, if p is greater than 1, it converges. If p is less than or equal to 1, it diverges. So it's really a very easy rule to use.